one evening after work, I was bicycling home, and I just got this lyric in my head, Bela Lugosi's dead. There'd been a run of old horror films on TV that Danny and I had both been watching, and the, the previous night, we were having a conversation on the phone about this, and he said, did you see that one last night? That was, that was a good one with Bela Lugosi. I said, yeah, I did see that, it's great. It's a great a classic. And so that was in my consciousness, and then this, this lyric just kind of came to me, white on white, translucent. Black capes back on the rack. Ella Lugosi's dead. So I got off the bike and got a slip out and wrote that first line down. The bats have left the bell tower. Uh, so by the time I got home, I had all these labels and I just put them out on the table transfer them into my little notebook and then that night no the next night we had a rehearsal and I just gave the lyrics to Peter way to Beck's studio, which is where Bauhaus recorded Bela Lugosi's Dead in 1979. And I have not set foot in that studio since 1984, when I was recording my second solo album, Crocodile Tears and the Velvet Kosh. So this is a very sentimental journey for me. White on white, translucent black hair. Back on rack. Bella Lugosi is dead. The bats have left the bell tower. The victims have been bled. Red velvet light. The black box. Bella Lugosi is dead. This is post Bauhaus festival um, patina <laughs> from playing bass. I had two big blisters here, which is al always the case whenever I play with play the Bauhaus material because it's intense. I like the way it looked. It looks sexy. And then when I, and the guy in the music shop, he was trying to put me off. And, and then I'm of the kind of pers personality when somebody tries to put, put me off, I try harder to, to get over that. <laughs> so he's saying, no kid, you look, that's, that's a whole other beast. You need the frets, you're just starting. You need, that's a whole other animal. You can I, I want to try it, can I try it? No, you don't, look, but no, I want to try it. So he got it down, and as soon as I held it, it felt right, you know. I was only a teenager, but it's just like, just had this kind of slinky feel, and I gravitated immediately to it, so I've always stuck with the fretless. Yeah. We've now hit the M1. This, this road is very important. I would go up and down in my little Moggy Minor, my little Morris car, and I'd have a, a little cassette player jammed in between the gear stick and the, uh, the front of the car, and I'd play cassettes driving up and down. 
crocodile tears. I was in the band to see gigs in London. I would go down, I saw the Sex Pistols and the Clash, play at the 100 Club in 1976. I'd go down and see the pub rock bands, uh, places like the Hope and Anchor, the Nashville Ruins. I'd go and see bands like Dr. Feelgood, one of my favorites, Kilburn and the High Roads, um, the Stranglers, and this was just before punk. Beck was pretty well equipped for a small studio um, and we we of course weren't aware that it was blessed with a, a, a really exceptional engineer in Derek Tompkins who was the owner and he, he built a lot of the gear in there like the desk he actually built the desk so he was a very clever guy and he had a great ear and he was very uh, open-minded he was older than us you know, he's like in his mid-50s. We thought he was ancient. This first one was recorded here. It was the first solo record. Etiquette of Violence. <laughs> Sanctuary when there's no place left to go. Safety in numbers, danger in the crowd. You're seeing nothing, but you're saying it too loud. Back to Beck. Yes, indeed. You heard We're uh, cruising down the back streets of Wellingborough on our final approach. Whispering sweet nothings Would have seemed like a crowd's rejoice Lister Road. Getting closer. Here it is. And there it is indeed. Can we wind the window down? Back studio. It looks just as I remember it, back in 1979. Beck studio. That's funny, look. No smoking because Derek would smoke, you know, chain smoke. It's like, hello! Oh, yeah, so, pleased to meet you finally, yeah. How are you doing? Oh, it looks brilliant. Wow. Legal. Hey. <laughs> All right. Hey. In my lifetime, better than yours. Last night go well? It was good, it was a good one, yeah. yeah. Doing all right. This has got no Thank time you. yet, by the way. What's that? This has got no time. All the, all the, all the repair boxes went before I got here, unfortunately. What about the legendary plate? That's, that's gone. That was oh, gone before I got here. Of course, yeah. I mean, um, that was so good. I know, it's a shame, it's such a shame. So I'm going um, into the control room. The control room. Hello. Hello. Hey, Neil. Hey, Neil. Neil, sorry. Oh, this is very different. Yeah. Yeah, because it used to be. It used to. Sit here, he? With the desk here, I think. No, it used to be like that end. Oh, was he? And yeah, he was oh, that there. Far back, was he? I, yeah, that's how I recall it. Because I remember him lying under the 
he would get under the, the, the desk line. and yeah, yeah and I've, fix heard, it. I've heard those stories. Yeah. So we see these so, yeah, two feet sticking out. Yeah. It's missing Derek's exploding ashtray. Yeah, yeah. This used to be full of cigarette smoke. I'll tell you what, <laughs> what was Bill's thinking earlier? No. So there we are. Excellent. Very good. We were actually thinking of recording our first album there. We wanted to go there, but Derek put us off because he said he thought it wasn't uh, really sort of advanced enough as a studio. In retrospect, I, I, I disagree. I think we could have made a great record there. But I mean, it, it sort of like shows Derek's sincerity. I mean, he could have capitalized on that and just brought us in. And, but he, he was very considerate, you know, saying, you know, you should go and record in a more well-equipped studio in London, which we did. And it turned out great. But I think uh, it would be interesting. It's an interesting idea to think of what In the Flat Field, the album, would have sounded like if we had have recorded it, recorded it at Beck. I tried just recording the effects pedals with uh, no input into them, just a jack jack plug in the room, and I thought that's that's the that's what I could contribute to the to the track on on the day, is to try and um, draw in some of the uh, electrical energy from the room into the performance uh, via just having an open cable going into some effects, uh, which would then generate a you know a backing to go with it. It's very sensitive, this. Down. Yes. There's a man on the corner, a coconut like Moses. Yeah. yeah. Make it like as natural sounding as you can. Nice and warm. There's a man on a corner coming on like Moses. Flagging your religion like a bunch of plastic roses. One, two, two. Mm. Yeah, okay. One, two, one, two. I'm going to roll it off. I need yeah. two, isn't I? Two, two, two. Do one like that, though. Tell Daniel.
white on white, translucent black heaps. Back on the rack. I think Peter was, if I recall correctly, he was actually in the same room. He was in the room here. And it was the first time that he sang into a mic in a studio. So it was a big deal for us, you know. It was like our first proper session. And uh, we were very excited, and especially about Bella, because we knew we had something a bit special with that in the bag, you know. And we wanted to put it in the can. So we did. Great. First take. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, okay, here we go. That's it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay. Good. happy with that? Yes, I've been in here. So this is a technique that Derek Tompkins taught me many moons ago here at Beck Studio and it's rather clever. It's rather clever. So you take a pencil 
and you stick a bit of tape on it and then you stick it onto the pop shield and it divides the air current even more so than this shield will do it's highly effective so then you know, I can say pop 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 and it won't <coughs> make the explosion that you do not want and I've shown like every engineer in every studio I've been in this this technique and they've all employed it so thank you Derek for that good one so am I going from the top yes okay here we go one two louder one two one check one One, two. My vocal needs to be louder. Put it down to happenstance and the timing of a click. In after parrying. Mm. Yep. I walked away from those weeping eyes. I walked away from the girl in yellow. I walked away. From those Italian eyes, I walked away from the girl in yellow. No longer could they turn my head since I've become a different fellow. I walked away from those crying eyes, I walked away from the girl in yellow. Okay, okay. After fellow, in after fellow. And let me hear it, let me hear it from the welcome in. Left from the party. Left from the party. I want to win. Um, That's much better tape than the first one. Yeah, no, doing it all the way through, it's much yeah. more natural. There was one little bit I liked right at the end of the first take. So just play it from the, the first end. take. Yeah, it was just one word. Walk away. At the very end, those little walk away. Things. Yeah. <laughs> with the change. Do you want it in that spot? Yeah, exactly that. Great. Just that. Good. Yeah, fantastic. That vocal's there, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's got there. the it's yeah. It's got the flavour. It's the, it's the room again, you see. Yeah. Helping. <laughs> Absolutely. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I walked away from the girl in yellow, I walked away from the girl in red, I walked away from the girl in midnight blue, I walked away from the girl in love. Right. Crikey. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Turn that camera off. <laughs> <laughs> Too late.